All right, what's, what's good? What's good? I'm back. Had some computer problems over those little slippage on the emotional elements. I'm back. That really, really wasn't no big deal. But um, I wanted to talk about today kind of the impact more of, of, of something we was talking about on a, on a panel um, this Saturday in Miami um, was the impact of, of, of Black Panther on um, kind of our opinion towards being nerds and like Africa, okay? And this is speaking to the power of, of science fiction, the power of black science fiction, and, and all of that. So um, this is going to be a little vent. It's going to be a little ramble, but, you know, um, it is all me, okay? So um, we were talking about, you know, Black Panther a year later and um, uh, what do you call it? What we got from it. And I, I said, as a school teacher, I was teaching at the time Black Panther came out, um, I saw a, a, a change in my kids. You know, number one, uh, Mr. Carroll, I would wear dashikis in November, in October, not just for Black History Month or for pre-Kwanzaa celebrations. I would, you know, drop my dashiki anytime throughout the year. And, you know, even though my school had a lot of Black kids, a lot of them being um, Jamaican and Haitian, um, African American, um, they still, um, they would, you know, flip out and be like, oh my God, what, you know, what, what you were wearing it for? And it was like a special occasion and, you know, um, things like that. And um, I said, no, it's a shirt. I'm wearing this a shirt. You know what I'm saying? It's a cultural shirt. It is what it is, you know? Um, and they didn't always get that, you know what I'm saying? Um, or at least they didn't originally get that, you know, I, you, you would still get the kids that would bug out and say, oh, you from Africa, you know, and mind you, the female black teacher has been wearing dashiki type stuff all year long and nobody done asked her. She done got pins in her hair and, you know, uh, tied her braids up, her dreads up and never had no problem. But, you know, to see a man wearing a dashiki top you like wow you know the kids was like wow and this was this was before black panther and um we had about three or four months after black panther you know but it took a minute for that impact to happen you know coming up to black panther people was like you know go to the to the movie dressed in you know wakanda clothes you know what i'm saying or whatever the heck that was you know what i'm saying um and that was cool you know uh, the people were going to the theater getting dressed up in African clothes. And I, and I refuse to call it garb. That's another personal peeve from my, um, more my uh, progressive hotep uh, days when I was in college. So I'm, I still don't call African clothes garb or short for garbage. You're never going to hear me say that unless you're going to say European garb or Italian garb or Russian garb or Chinese garb. Anyway, side note, let's go back. Um, so now in this post uh, Black Panther era, I'm seeing a lot of people, black and even some white people or it's just some other ethnicities uh, wearing dashikis outside of February. You know, outside of Kwanzaa celebrations, you know, they popping up everywhere now. 90% of them are Chinese dashikis, but those were popular before Black Panther came out. So, you know, it is what it is. And it's not just women. I'm seeing some men with some real nice dashikis or even African printed material restructured into a, like a, um, a, a, a golf shirt or some of them are dress shirts with the collar. That's not that progressive, but I'm gonna give it still a pass because they are wearing the African print. Um, I remember when I was in Africa, my second time going to Ghana, um, I just marveled, even the first time I went, how um, 
dashikis were worn. I like I saw a guy working on a car in a dashiki. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you getting oil on it, son? And um, kids was playing basketball with dashikis on. I was like, yo, I never thought about getting my dashiki fully sweated out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know they were tight or whatever, but there was different material for dashiki. So, you know, they had one that they could play basketball in. I'm like, get out of here. And they had worn them down so much that they were softer and more flexible. And I was just like, I can't imagine that. I had never thought about that. In America, any African outfit, at least for me, was um, something um, uh, for a, a special occasion. You know, it was, you didn't even wear it to the movies. You wore it to a wedding. You wore it to a graduation. You wore it to a banquet dinner. Uh, you wore it to, you know, things like that. You didn't wear them to play basketball. You know, nobody comes to the basketball court with a dashiki on in America. You know what I'm saying? Black, white, anybody, you know? Um, and I'm like, wow, they just made, you know, dashiki a regular shirt. I'm like, wow, that is hot. And um, not that dashikis are viewed like that in America now, but we are seeing dashikis worn just regular clothes. Like, it's a nice outfit, it's a nice shirt, so people are wearing it. Before, it used to just be for cultural events, you know? You didn't even wear it to weddings, you know? Now, it's for other important events, like weddings, like graduations, uh, like church on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Any arbitrary Sunday, I bet you this Easter, you're gonna see people wearing dashikis, um, uh, what do you call it, to church. So uh, that, I think, has been one of the impacts of Black Panther. Um, and in, in being a year later, even if it goes away, you know, in a few you know, months or whatever, it still, or it only lasts a few years, that's still a legacy of Black Panther, and Black Panther's got to be um, proud of that. Not only that, it has an impact on our children. So our children will see um, a Black Panther, or not Black Panther, they will see you know people wearing dashikis all times of the year. So when they grow up, they have that option to wear their dashikis all times of the year. Um, second, uh, working with um, young men in school and also people because I'm a man so outside of the school I you know I talk to my friends as well but we're not in the formative times of our lives I'm 50 something years old so you know I am kind of who I am going to be even though I'm tweaking it a little bit right but young men you know formulating their goals after Black Panther seeing Killmonger particularly um, also Black Panther, but more so Killmonger, who was played by Michael B. Jordan, who also in the same year played Creed, who was playing Creed before Black Panther, um, play Killmonger, who was a tech nerd, he went to MIT, and he said it with swag, and he carried himself with swag. His hey auntie comment or line is now printed on t-shirts and everybody was joking about it after you know it was on it became added to the lexicon of of english you know slang and i just felt wow yeah, how cool is that when i grew up i can't name any of the black people that played tech nerds you know that could get on the computer and go you know i'll find out you know let me hack into this or hack into that or, you know, just was saying, yo, I went to MIT. Those, you know, people did not have swag. Even going to Harvard, you barely had swag. You know, you might not get shunned, which was smart, but you didn't have swag. You weren't cool. Michael B. Jordan, in my opinion, just the little bit that I saw, I saw in my kids, the coming out of the closet of engineering, computer science types of uh, career paths and interests. You know, I, I majored, I came into college as a computer science major, but I was like, I don't want to be a programmer. 
all they do is sit behind the computer and real hardcore nerds. I was like, maybe I will be a technician. It sounds better. It sounds more masculine. You know what I'm saying? But that was my major. I had to switch my major in college to go into business. But, you know, I wasn't majoring in, you know, a tech tech career. That was out of, out of your mind. Now, um, and I don't think it's only because of Killmonger, but I do recognize that now we do have a variety. Uh, we do have a uh, coolness that is tech. You know, we got black tech weeks all over the country. Shout out to them. You know, just making being a tech person um, cool, you know, uh, interest in STEM, cool. So um, if Black Panther didn't create it, 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 it reinforced it. And that's what I like to give credit to Black Panther for. So um, that's really just my rant today. Um, I don't know, maybe I need to make, I'm, I'm thinking about making the blog a little bit more controversial in um, the sense that I am, um, I'm going to start talking about things right away that are in the news. Um, so anyway, thank you for tuning in. I got another blog coming uh, later this week. I'm going to do another one. I try to do two a week. So um, I got another one coming. But um, anyway, peace. Black Panther, um, go see it again. Yo, knock it out. Um, and they got a sequel coming. So they got all that good stuff. All right, peace.